I think we are good to go. Hello, I'm gonna put my camera on the tripod here so that I can crochet while we talk. Make sure I'm in frame. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome. I am glad to see you this Sunday afternoon. I had to hurry up and do some chores before I would have the luxury of sitting and stitching and crocheting with you for a little while. Hopefully I'll be able to read your comments from here. <laughs> the camera's kind of far away for, I'm gonna move it closer, for um, me to be able to read you guys as you chime in. I will make sure that the chat is turned on. Yes, live chat, live comments are visible. Hello. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hear you. Mm -hmm. I mean, read ya, because I don't have those glasses on, so I am, Looking, hello, hello. If I go closer, there. Hi, Dawn, I can read that. I can read that, hello, hello, hello. How are you? Okay, I'm crooked. Whew. I was rushing around doing some chores so that I could have the luxury of spending some time with you. Today, I have been playing with some Tunisian uh, knit stitch just, I did do one row of purl stitch just to keep it from curling, but I'm doing Tunisian knit stitch today with this uh, lovely Louisa Harding Girandola Pinwheel of Color, G-I-R-A-N-D-O-L-A. I figured with this really gorgeous yarn, and I think that it shows up really well on the camera, with this gorgeous yarn, I was just going to do a basic stitch. Hello. Oh, no, your internet is sluggish. Well, I'm glad to see you, though. Um, I figured with this really multicolored yarn, and it's so pretty, that I would just let it do all the work. So I picked a very, very simple stitch, and I was in the mood to do some Tunisian. So I'm just going to, I think this is a lot of yardage. So I think this will make a really long scarf. I'm looking for the yardage here. 612 yards. So I don't know how long this will be um, if I just use one ball, which I love to use one ball projects, as you know from One Skin Crochet. Worst case, I make it until I run out. Thank you, I think it's pretty too. I'll, I'll like make a scarf until it's the length that I want and then see how much yarn I have left. And then I could always make a second one and crochet them together and make a stole or a wider, wider scarf or just make two. So I don't know what's gonna happen. This is just kind of free form improvising today. How are you, Dawn? What are you working on? I just got home from a weekend away. I'm so thrilled to have gotten the chance to relax with my husband this weekend. So I am just crocheting. I got my laundry in, got my dishes done, so ready to tackle another week. So the only thing I haven't done is grocery shopping. You know how you get home from a trip and it's just like, oh, do I have any groceries? I did get a few groceries before I left. I am crocheting Tunisian. This is the back side, the pearl side, because I am uh, Tunisian crocheting knit stitch. This is what the front looks like. Um, my son, our son stayed home, so and I did buy some groceries for him before I left, so I don't think I have to run out and get groceries just yet. but. I'll, I'll try to crochet up here high so you guys can see me as I work. But um, I hope you guys are well. Happy Sunday to you. I'm so excited about tomorrow being the first day of March so we can get some of this winter weather one step closer to um, less winter. Although it's been a fun winter in terms of like we did have a ton of snow, but we were lucky enough not to lose power or uh, water, so that makes it easier. Certainly, I feel for those people who did lose power, they did not want snow. I'm sure they did not want that much snow. So hopefully where you were, you are enjoying your winter and uh, it hasn't been too bad. Hello, there's five people here. If you could give a thumbs up to say hello or chime in and say hello in chat or both, I'd appreciate it. I'm just sitting here Tunisian crocheting today. This is the back side, and I'm just going to keep right on going. This is a gorgeous back side too, but then the front side is uh, Tunisian knit stitch. So I am crocheting today. What are you guys doing? You're working on putting some granny squares together for a blanket, excellent. As you guys know, probably from my last live stream, I am planning to do a um, 
the next book a squares book and motifs book, maybe even a sampler afghan if I can get all the squares to be the same size. I had six squares. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> I had six squares at that live um, conversation last time. Hi, buddy. You're a good boy. Oh, don't bark. Um, and I now have eight, oh. eight and a half. The ninth one is in process. <laughs> and I'd like to have like maybe 14 and then delete my two least favorites and then create a sampler afghan for you all that is 12 squares and um, get that going as a crochet along with a uh, PDF for you so that you'd have all the written instructions and we could do that all oh. together. Oh, is there a bicycle, a person on a bicycle going by out front? And so he's very interested in that. So that's the plan. I've got eight and a half squares. I want, I really would like to have 14 and delete my two least favorite. Hello, everybody. So Dawn, you're putting some squares together for a blanket. So what color, what yarn, tell me all about it. So Hobie says hello. <laughs> Goofy dog. Um, are you gonna sit, buddy? You sit, you sit on my lap so I can crochet? That's a good boy. So we will keep crocheting and see if he will let me. <laughs> Um, I was hoping to do some more squares this weekend, but it didn't work out and that is just fine. It's not, you can't, can't always be productive, so it's okay. So what else are you guys working on? So I'd like to do book number seven and, um, I still have the other concept in mind, which would, I guess, be book number eight. <laughs> and I've got an idea for book number nine. I always, always have ideas whether or not I get to them in a way that makes me happy. Oop. There he goes, sitting on the lap. Uh, paw prints at a heart, yes, he's my little guy. And since I was away for the weekend, I think he's happy to see me, which is nice. Um, so I always, always have ideas and whether or not I get to them, have time for them, um, or see them through is another thing. Sometimes I lose interest in my ideas and then I think, well, that's okay because um, if I lost interest, probably you all would lose interest too. So I have to be uh, committed to an idea to really see it through. And that gives me a clue. If I still love it, um, maybe you will like it long term as well. So what else is going on? Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody stopping in. Um, leave me a comment so that I know you're here. Tell me where you're from, what you're doing, what you're crocheting. Today I'm crocheting. Tunisian uh, knit stitch, which is a favorite of mine, and I think it's gonna look really pretty in this this yarn. And Doggy here is still trying to figure out how he is going to join us. There he goes, he's gonna sit on the chair. He's sitting on the chair over here in a little circle. When he sits in a little circle and the cats lay in a circle, I call that shrimpy. They look like a little shrimp to me <laughs> with the legs in the middle <laughs> and a little curled. Um, pattern. So when I see them, I always say shrimpy, which is goofy, I know, but it is what it is. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm glad you're here. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me how things are going in your crochet or knit world. What are you looking forward to? Kind of journal or notebook or calendar or something to keep track of your works in progress and the yard stitches you're using and where you're at with those. Um, do you keep some kind of a log book or a list or how do you keep track of your works in progress? I would really like to know because I do not keep track of mine very well. <laughs> They're kind of random out throughout my office. This is the yarn I'm using today, by the way. They're, uh, my works in progress are random in my office and I like put them aside, usually when company's coming over. Stylecraft Erin Yarns, oyster white with a beach applique theme. Ooh, that's fancy. Um, how big is it gonna be, Dawn? I'd love to, to know. And what is it, um, is it for a gift or is it for yourself? So do you keep track of your works in progress somehow or do you keep them all in one place or how do you keep track of your works in progress or even the ones you wanna do next? You know, the ones you want to do next, do you keep 
a log of what you've already done. I used to keep a, um, a big uh, photo album, big spiral bound photo album, and you guys have probably seen that in live streams um, of the past, but I used to keep a photo of every project in a photo album, and I even had tabs. I was so crazy about, you know, not crazy, but so obsessed <laughs> with crochet that I would keep a little tab of paper in the caption of the photo section in the album that said what year it was and then maybe what yarn or who it was for, who I gave it to, as if it was a gift. Um, and somewhere, I mean, I gosh, I filled up that album, started another album, and I don't know exactly when I stopped doing that. It was a few years into being a professional that I stopped doing that because it just became too much because I was crocheting so much and so many projects every month that I really didn't, I just couldn't keep up. Now I've slowed down considerably now that I'm working full time and um, I don't get to make completed projects quite as often and I don't take photos as um, consistently as I used to. But how about you? Do you keep track of your projects? Do you keep a log or a book or a photo album or a gallery? Do you um, do you do that online? Do you do it in a hard copy? How does that work for you? Do you keep it at a photo album uh, file on your phone? I'd love to hear all about how you keep track. So I'm just going to Tunisian knit stitch as we go along and I'll answer your questions or wait till you all chime in and tell me how you keep track of your works in progress. Um, do you have a log book of some kind or a notebook? Also, let's see what else is going on. Um, the motif blanket idea is coming along. I'm excited about that. I haven't lost interest in that yet, so eight projects. Working on a Korean boy sweater album inspired. You take a picture and then put them in the journal that you keep with your patterns. Oh, interesting. A Korean boy sweater inspired? Like, tell me more about that. As you probably know, my daughter is a East Asian languages and culture major at Indiana University, and her favorite is Korean language. So she is, um, she's been studying Korean three or four years before college, and now she's in her finishing her second year of Korean language, um, four semesters. So she's gotten quite proficient. <laughs> I don't know if I would call her fluent because I don't know well enough, but she also speaks Japanese. Anyway, Korean is something that's special to us because it's special to her. So I'd like to hear more about that. Um, are you all inspired by other countries and other cultures? I know that I really like other cultures, ideas. I love um, on Instagram often seeing Bosnian. Oh, that's too organized for you. Me too. That's why I'm looking for ideas so I can be more organized. Um, I'm often inspired by, uh, oh, BTS, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears album covered. Oh my gosh. Do you know I've seen BTS in person twice? <laughs> you keep track on your phone since you're not a professional. Okay, well, that's fine. Any, any way to do it. Mara and I have seen BTS in person twice, and we have considered ourselves ARMY, which is the fan base of BTS, for those of you who don't know. The sweater for your youngest sister, love them. Oh, me too, I'm, me too. So we have considered ourselves big fans, ARMY fans, since 2016 when we discovered them. She discovered them first and she introduced me to them and I love them too and I listen to all their music and um, we have various memorabilia around the house and we've, we've actually seen them twice in person, the two times that they have been here. We did have tickets to see them in 2020 and then it was canceled. But we traveled to Chicago both years. It would have been 2018 and 2019 when they came and we saw them in Chicago both times. 
Yeah, Chicago, both times. One was at um, inside at like the baseball stadium. You're making a baby blanket for your niece's new baby. Nice, what yarn, what colors? Tell me all about it, what kind of stitch? Um, we saw them at an indoor like basketball, are we Chicago Bulls type <laughs> arena? I'm not into sports. And then we also saw them outside at the place where they play baseball in Chicago. Not, I forget, I forget what this name is. You put the Army logo on it as a surprise high school graduation gift. You're proud. Last seven kids came out of school. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So anyway, I love BTS too. And um, that's really thrilling that I found another person who likes BTS. So I really enjoy their music. Now Mara has, um, my daughter Mara is into piano too, and she was a piano minor at IU. She still is, I guess. But um, she says technically, musically, they're really gifted, and I know nothing about that except I like them. <laughs> I don't know how technically great they are, but I really enjoy their music. So, um, and I love the fact that they give money to charity. To, they've got a UNICEF program, and they have spoken in front of the. Um, uh, United Nations and and things about uh, child welfare around the world and so I I like that I I can get behind that so it's a good thing so baby blankets motif blankets so Dawn says you're not you're not organized enough to have a system and then the keeping track on your phone is absolutely a great way to do things um, I really need to clean my office and get that organized. Maybe I'll start myself a new system next time I clean my office. What are the odds of me sticking with it though? <laughs> you guys wanna take bets? <laughs> so um, I would like to get more organized. And if it was January again, I might even consider making it a New Year's resolution. But um, I've been baby stepping towards uh, getting my life a little bit more organized. I have started with my closet, with my clothes closet, and I've been able to keep that relatively clean-ish, as neat and orderly, um, for the last, oh, maybe almost two months, I would say, almost two months, that, that I've kept it sufficiently organized that I am pleased with the improvement. So now that I've managed to get in a habit with that, it's time to maybe tackle another area of the house. Maybe I will put some effort into my crochet office, which, you know, I have a tendency to dump and run <laughs> when I'm cleaning is just throw it in there and shut the door. And um, so I'd like for things to everything to have its own spot and to be able to know where it goes to put it away, I think that's the problem. It's like if, if everything has a designated spot, I'm more likely to put it where it belongs, but I don't, I'm not that organized, so maybe I need to, uh, maybe I need to figure out a place, everything in its place. If I were to crochet, to uh, organize my crochet closet, I think I would need like one section for like finished items that ha used to be in magazines and books, but I like don't use them. So like I would need a place to store those. I would need a place for all the hundreds of swatches that I have, some kind of system for swatches. Um, a better, a revamp my system of um, yarns. I used to have all my yarns in plastic drawers by brand and I still like that system but somewhere along the line it fell apart so I need to re put them back into sections by brand and that likely would mean that I would have to take it all out and see like how much I have of each brand so that I know whether to put it in the big drawers or put it in the littler drawers <laughs> um, I like that system. And then I have books. I have a whole, like a three shelf of books and those are pretty disorganized. There's no like rhyme or reason of like them being on the shelf, except that one half of one of the shelves is my knit section. And then <laughs> the other two and a half shelves are crochet. And then I have another cabinet of two shelves that's nothing but 
uh, stitch dictionaries. You have a rolling closet for your sweater collection that you've made. Oh, that's cool. So like you made the rolling closet or sweaters that you've made? Which ones have you made or both? Um, yeah, a closet for, do you hang your sweaters or do you uh, fold them and stack them? And then, so the other cabinet I have that's nothing but stick, stitch <laughs> dictionaries and um, research books on grading, sizing, construction, um, t uh, sketch pads, that kind of thing. That, that cabinet is there. I used to have another cabinet. You're jealous about my closet. You just started to put things away and I'm not worn since the beginning of the pandemic. I'm no longer working because of it. Oh, I'm not happy about that. Yeah, my closet, I'm doing okay with my closet. I have been working since August. So from March to August, I worked from home. And then I work at a school, so we were off school anyway from June, to June July, and then back in August. And then March to... Um, June while school was still in session we worked from home most of the time and so I've just been wearing casual clothes but now that I'm back at school August since August we are we have been in person in school since August so I've been back in school clothes <laughs> work work attire um, let's see I used to have a cabinet good day Christine I used to have a cabinet that was binders. You, if you guys have ever have hung out with me long enough, you would know that every time I come up with a big project, an exciting project, I create a binder for it. And so I keep all of the sketches, thoughts, paperwork, patterns in the binder all together while I'm working on it. So a book would get a binder, a season of the TV show would get a binder, a video, would, uh, not here, but a video. I did several videos for Annie's catalog.com like those videos each had binders so I've got a cabinet of binders um, and now that a lot of those projects are older published and I've moved on I've gone ahead and emptied those binders of the um, the stuff that I don't need to keep forever but um, so I have fewer binders but hey maybe this next book number seven that I'd like to do with you guys um, needs a binder. <laughs> it's, it is definitely a binder worthy project. So I guess I've sort of kept in touch with uh, my works in pro process through binders. And those were more like mm, big multi, multi project projects. So lots of, you know, like my books obviously were like 15 projects or, you know, the Afghan design workbook was 50 motifs. And then um, I forget how many blankets, 10 maybe. Um, so all of that needed a binder to keep everything together. And so um, I, don't, I don't need all those binders after they're published. And so I have um, harvested out all of the paperwork that I don't need and, and have empty binders ready for big new projects. So the next book, book number seven that I'm excited about self-publishing this time but at least that's the plan, that's the hope, that's the dream. Um, it needs its own binder, I think, by now. So anyway, and I would really like to create a system where I kept in, kept kept track of my works and pro process <laughs> better. I have so many ideas and I can't even keep them all straight sometimes, so I wish I had a system of logging my ideas so that I don't forget them. <laughs> um, and then of course I can always go to my log or list or whatever ledger of ideas and um, pick one when I feel like working on it. I used to have, when I was a beginner professional, a very intricate system of uh, keeping track of all my projects. I had a one page uh, sheet a summary sheet that I would keep and on I'd have one page for each project and the project would include like a short description a title that I was working with I gave everything a code number because I had so many ideas I couldn't keep them all straight if if I had a, a photo of the swatch I was working with it I would pin it onto that paper or take a photo and embed it into the paper 
And then I would keep track of like, um, if I sent the idea to a magazine, which I which magazine I sent it to, what date I sent it to them so that I would know not to send it to another magazine while I waited for the first magazine. And then if that one didn't pan out, then I would keep track of like where I sent it next and all the date and all of that. I used to keep all track of all of that on one sheet. And then all of those sheets were in a binder. So those were all my works in progress sheets. And then when I sold the item, then I would take that page out put it in a manila folder with my pattern from writing the pattern and that would go in a drawer in my filing cabinet of finished uh, projects. And so, yeah, you took the sewing diary idea and modify it to work for you. That's how I created my sewing journal. Awesome. Sewing. It, now, did you, I'd like to hear more about that, like where it is. You have a good friend who is a superb knitter. She keeps swatches in a binder, works for her. She's also an educator. Okay, so she's very good at organizing. I would think so. Swatches in a binder is a great idea, but boy, those binders can get fat in a hurry, can't they? So I would need like, I just have bags and bags and bags of swatches, <laughs> like lots of swatches. And some of them I've used and some of them I haven't, and that's part of the uh, problem in terms of disorganization. It's like, I need to make sure that the ones I've actually used I move to a different bag so that I don't reuse them um, and I can just keep moving forward or, or using the other ones as inspiration to go to see if they would make a great finished project or not. But um, so I used to keep these binders and then I still have drawers and drawers and drawers of file cabinets full of manila folders that have all the paperwork associated with the, uh, I don't know, 400 finished sold designs that I have had over the years. Because it's very common for someone to email me and ask me a question about a project that I sold 15 years ago. And I'm like, what? I don't even remember that one. You know, what was it called? You know, where was it published? What does it look like? You know, and then I go try to go find my notes um, or the finished, hopefully the finished published book or magazine so that I can see how they edited it to see how to answer the question. But boy, is that time consuming to try and like unearth all of that and figure it all out. Anyway, so I would like to get more organized. <laughs> So I started with my closet for my clothes and I've done a fairly good job. And so it's time to work on being more organized with my crochet. So if you're just joining me, I'm working on uh, yesterday's thimble.com has an article on it. Okay, good. I will look it up. Thank you very much for that reference. I'm making a Tunisian. Hey, Deb Johnny, no problem. Hi, welcome, welcome. I'm making a scarf out of Tunisian knit stitch. I did have one row of pearl stitch down here at the bottom to help it not curl. So that was just like Tunisian. Well, this this little part here curled. So I did like four rows of two or three rows, maybe four. One, two, three, three rows of Tunisian knit stitch. Then I did one row here of Tunisian pearl stitch and then back to Tunisian knit stitch. And that has kept only this little beginning three rows is curling. Yes, it's it's all one yarn, Deb Johnny. So the, I'm letting the yarn do all the work. And so then all of the, um, so it's not curling anymore. That um, pearl row is keeping it um, in check. So I just figured I would let the yarn do all the work for me since it is such a beautiful yarn. And I would just enjoy uh, some mindless uh, Tunisian knit stitch and enjoy the colors as they progress. Anyway, I'm probably going to wrap up here. I was planning on doing 30 minutes. I'm sorry that some of you are joining just as I'm planning to wrap up. But we were talking today about um, organizing your yarn closets and works in progress and how you keep track of your works in progress and uh, how to organize swatches, how I organized big projects, keeping track of them. And um, let me know in the comments below if you 
um, are watching this video after it has already aired and maybe want to leave a, a comment about how you organize and keep track of your works in progress, how you catalog or keep track of projects you've already made from the past and where they went, do you keep a photo, all of that. Um, I was even keeping my thank you notes there for a while if I gave a project for a baby shower, for example, and someone wrote me a thank you note, I kept it in that little a photo album with the project because I just treasure that so much. Um, and, you know, I'm working towards a better organizational system for my yarn office, which is a room with a long closet. And um, I'd like to do a better job of keeping track of that. So that's all for today. I am just going to enjoy some Tunisian crochet while I put my feet up and maybe listen to an audiobook the rest of this gray, cloudy, overcast uh, Sunday afternoon in February. So thank you all for joining me. Hello, oh my gosh, I was just head, heading out, so I'm sorry I've missed you, but please hit a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you don't mind, if you enjoyed some time talking about crochet organization, please leave a comment below on how you keep track of your organization, and um, I will see you on the next video. Bye, everybody.